Number 40. Balance each of the following equations according to the half reaction method. And then we have letter G. So in this case, we have to balance iron ion, which is iron Fe3 plus, plus I minus, and that will yield Fe2 plus, and then I2, right? Okay. So let's do it. The first thing is that just know that since they didn't tell us that we're like in acidic conditions or basic conditions, right? You'll still do the same uh, steps if it was a acidic solution. So when in doubt, just balance acidic if, if they're asking you to balance a redox reaction. It will work itself out in the end. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we have to do is we have to break the uh, equation into two half reactions. Here's one whole equation. We need two half reactions. So pick the elements that go together. I have an iron on this side, and I have an iron on this side. And then the same thing, I have an iodine on my left side and an iodine on my right side. So my one half reaction would be the two irons together, and the other half reaction would be the two iodines together. It's as simple as that. So let's write them out. My first one would be Fe3+, plus, and that's aqueous, and that will yield Fe2+, plus, and that's aqueous. And then we have I minus aqueous, and then I have I2 aqueous. Okay, so first part's done already. Now we have to balance all the elements except hydrogen and oxygen. However, I don't see any hydrogen and oxygen here, so I just balance all the elements that I see. I see that I have Fe and Fe, right? And then I and I. Okay, so let's work with the top first. I have, basically, I have one iron on the left side, and I have one iron on the right side. So that's already balanced. But on the bottom, I have an iodine. I have one of them. But on this side, I have two iodines, right? The two is telling me that I have two iodines. So I need to balance it. If I have two on this side and only one on this side, I am going to put a two coefficient over here. And that gets rid of step number two. I balanced those elements. Step three is to balance the oxygen. But however, we don't have any oxygen here. So I can skip that step. Step four is to balance any hydrogen. But once again, I don't have any hydrogen. So I just, I kindly skip over it. And now we come to a step in which we will never, ever, ever uh, skip, all right, when balancing redox reactions. We need to balance the charges. And by balancing the charges, we will add electrons, which are E negative. Electrons are negative to always the more positive side. So between the two sides of a half reaction, I need to find out which one is more positive. So here's where I'm going to be tallying up the charges. I split them down the middle, right? And I'll work with one side and then get the other side charge. Now, for the charges, you're just looking in the upper right-hand corner. These two guys have charges, right? So let's see. This one, they told me that the charge was a 3+, plus, and I only have one iron, so the total charge would be a plus 3 for my reactant side. Now, for my product side... I have a 2 plus. I only have one of them, so my overall charge would be a plus 2. You add electrons to the more positive side. Out of a plus 3 and a plus 2, plus 3 is more positive. So I know that I'm going to add electrons to the left side. Ooh. But now how many? Well, how many numbers does it take for me to go from a 3 all the way down to a 2? Yeah, only one, right? It, if you think about it as a number line, a three is right next to a two. So I would just add one electron. Now let's do the same for the bottom. Well, let's see. I have a negative charge here. That's a negative one. But now there's two of them. So I have to multiply. So two times a negative one would tell me that this side is an overall negative two charge. And then on here, I don't see a charge in the upper right-hand corner. So it's neutral. It's not positive nor negative, so it's a zero charge. So this side would be a zero. Now, looking at the two numbers, which side is more positive? Yeah, the zero is more positive than a negative two. So I know that I have to add electrons here. 
How many though? Well, on a number line, how many can we go from a zero all the way down to a negative two? Yeah, two spots, right? So there you go for that. And now I added those electrons. And this is a good check. The electrons that you added should be on opposite ends of this divider. If your electron that you added was on the same side as the divider, uh, go back. Try again, start from the beginning, something went wrong, okay? All right, so now I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. We don't really need the math anymore. So I'm just going to get rid of all this junk. Um, and yeah, all right. Now we just have to balance the electrons. Let's see, are these electrons balanced? Well, I have one electron on my, my reactant side and I have two electrons on the product side down here. They're not balanced, so I need to balance them. You do that by multiplying, right? What's the number that I can get to be the same and the lowest number possible between a one and a two? Do I have to multiply both equations? Can I only multiply one? In this case, I could multiply the top equation by two, right? One times two will get me two. I don't have to do anything to the bottom equation. Let me just erase this. So with that being said, I'm just going to multiply the top equation by two. But now here's the thing, guys. You can't just multiply this. You have to multiply every coefficient. Every coefficient of that top equation gets changed. So just take your time and just make sure that you multiply each of them to the new number. So for example, I had one electron, but now I'm timesing it by two. So I will have two electrons here. Now let me just pull this over. In this case, I had one iron, but now one times two is now two iron. I had one iron over here, right? One Fe, but one times two is now two irons. And now since I changed all the coefficients, I can now get rid of this. And now the electrons are balanced. And maybe I'll make that in blue. Okay. So step six is done. We're almost there, guys. Now we just have to cancel like substances out. So that includes um, electrons, if we had H pluses, if we had waters. But in this case, we only have one thing that's the same. It's the two electrons. They get canceled out. Nothing else I can cancel out. They're all unique. I can't cancel out the irons because the charges are different. They have to be identical. So now all we have to do is just rewrite as one equation. Everything that's on the left-hand side goes on the left-hand side of the reaction, and then everything on the right as well. So the final answer would be 2 Fe3 plus aqueous plus 2 iodine. Ooh. 2i minus yields 2Fe2 plus aqueous and then plus I2 aqueous. It doesn't matter which one you wrote first on the left side or the right side. It just matters that who's ever on the left has to be on the left. Who's ever on the right has to be on the right. And this is your final answer. Woohoo! Okay. Guys, what do you think? Hopefully this helped. If it did, let me know in the comments. I really love talking to you guys. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Let's keep studying hard. And I will see you guys all in the next lesson, probably for some more redox. Oh, yeah. All right. Bye.